Are you struggling with the feast day calendar? Well, let me show you how the one I use works. See that thing behind me? That's the Zadok calendar in bead form. Over Sukkot, we saw that some people had been making these bead calendars, but no one was making them for the Zadok calendar as far as we could tell. So my wife and I did a little work and she put them all together and I wanna show you how it works in case you're a visual learner. And just as a side note, if you're looking into the calendars, there's a link on my TikTok and YouTube to the Zadok calendar. It explains how it works and gives you all the days digitally for the upcoming feast days. But it's always nice to see how it lays out right in front of you. Let me show you this one. Okay, here's the Zadok calendar. The calendar is comprised of 364 days divided into 12 months with 30 days each. In four of those months, the third, the sixth, the ninth, and the twelfth month, there is an additional intercalary day, the equinoxes and solstices. On the 31st day at the end of the month marks the change of the seasons, and we always see this to be true. The following day after this, so we take this red equinox bead, move up to the first day of the calendar month right here. Some call those days of remembrance or new moons or new month really is a better translation. But some people keep those as Sabbaths. It really depends where you're at with all of that. Uh, technically, it's not biblical. It's extra biblical. But we do see in the Bible that they were celebrating these days. Um, we just aren't told exactly how they were doing that. Okay, now... On this day, this is the spring equinox right here. The following day, this one is the first day of the calendar year, which always ends up being on a Wednesday on the Zadok calendar. Wednesday, of course, being the Gregorian fourth day. The reason it starts on a Wednesday is because this is when the luminaries were created, the fourth day. That's what started the entire timepiece of the world we live in. Once the beginning of the year has been established, the pattern never changes, following a 30-day, 30-day, and 31-day cycle all through the entire year. The Dead Sea Scrolls tell us the day of the week and month for each Shabbat and Moedim, proving that the Moedim and Shabbats are on the same day of the week and month every year leaving the seven-day week cycle absolutely unbroken. The Zadok calendar is the only calendar that can be shown true chronology with Scripture. You can find that in First Chronicles 24. It lines up with the, uh, the priestly, I don't know, I don't know what you call it, the, the priestly laid out way it's supposed to be, whatever you call it. Read First Chronicles 24. Given enough data and dates in an account, it can be matched perfectly to the Zadok calendar in both the Hebrew and Greek texts. No other calendar presented as biblical can claim to do that, at least not as far as I'm aware. Now that you have a basic idea how it works, we know this is the beginning of the year, the fourth day or Wednesday on the Gregorian calendar. These blue beads are Shabbats. Then these knots right here mark the beginning of the feast day starting at night. Now, I know people are in a different place, but I still hold true to the fact that they don't all start at sunset the day before. Um, the Most High tells us that only Passover and Day of Atonement start at evening, so I stick to that. This knot right here signifies that the Feast day starts in the evening before that day. So that happens on first Passover, second Passover for those who missed this Passover, and the Day of Atonement right here. The rest of the feast days and Sabbaths I hold during the sunrise hours only. Uh, I have videos about why I believe that to be true. You can go check those out in my holiday playlist. But let's move on. So this is Passover, which starts at evening the day before and runs 24 hours. These are the holy days of the week, and this is the regular seventh-day Shabbat. Another thing about this calendar is the Shabbats and the Moedim never overlap, um, which I think is biblically and scripturally completely accurate. But 
Either way, we can get into that another time. But these are the holy days of the week, the week of Passover and second Passover. Uh, not all of them are to be kept as Sabbaths, just the seventh day Sabbath, and then the beginning and the end. Then we have our normal Shabbats moving on. We have Shavuot right here. Then we get into the fall feast, the Day of Trumpets, Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, and then we get into the first and last day of Sukkot again with a normal seventh day Shabbat right there in the middle of it. So this is basically how this calendar works, and I want to show you some of the ways that it lines up with Scripture. Okay, this is Leviticus 23. In the first month, this is about Passover, by the way. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month at twilight is the Lord's Passover. Right here, we have the first month. So we have day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. We got our got our bead right here. And at twilight, the day before, where we have the knot, is the day of the Passover. I'm showing you that numerically it actually lines up on the calendar. If you use the Enoch calendar, that's not the case. Here is the next one, Shavuot. You shall count seven full weeks from the day after the Sabbath from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering. Okay, the last day of Passover, that's when we bring that offering right here. So it says count seven full weeks after the Shabbat, after that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, boom, Shavuot. All right, this is about trumpet. Speak to the people of Israel saying, in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall observe the Feast of Trumpets. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh month, on the first day of the month is when we observe Feast of Trumpets. And remember, that's right after this actual equinox here that we can observe. So it literally would be the first day of the seventh month. Then here's the Day of Atonement. On the 10th day in the seventh month is the Day of Atonement. All right, here we are in our seventh month. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And because it's 24 hours, we have the knot right here signifying it starts in the evening. But it literally actually lines up with what the Bible says on the 10th day of the seventh month. And remember, these are all marked by actual equinoxes that you can observe. So this calendar does, in fact, use the sun, moon, and stars as witnesses. Then we have the Feast of Booths, or Sukkot. Speak to the people and say on the 15th day of the 7th month is the Feast of Booths. All right, we're here at the 10th day of the 7th month, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Here's the first day of Sukkot. You guys, this calendar always lines up with the luminaries and what the Bible actually says. If you use the Enoch calendar, it doesn't line up like this. And again, I'm not grieving you if you're on a different calendar. I'm just trying to explain how this one works and use scripture. If you use the moon to set these feast days, it doesn't line up like this. You have to wait until the moon hits a certain phase and then you count from there and you're like, okay, this is the first day of the 10th month, but it's not actually the first day of the 10th month unless you ignore the rest of the calendar and have a completely separate count from the moon, which I can't find any scripture to confirm. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The moon is on a completely different pattern than the sun and the equinoxes. So it comes in 10 days too late behind the sun each month, or sorry, each year. If we were trying to find the Day of Atonement, we would wait for this equinox, and then we would wait for the moon to be in the proper phase, and then we'd count from there. So if the moon was right here, then we'd count from this day, and we'd be, you know, 10 days. Okay, but it's not actually the 10th day of the 7th month. You're actually on the 20th day of the 7th month if you do it that way. Not to mention, like I said, the Zadok calendar lines up with the priestly order laid out in canon scripture, and I can't find any other calendar that does that. At least not at this time, not that I'm aware of. Like I said, I'm not going to grieve you if you're on a different calendar. I'm really just glad that you're trying to keep the feast days. But this calendar is the only one in my mind that makes any sense right now. If you guys have any other options or have anything to add, I'd love to hear from you. But at the moment... 
I think this is the most accurate calendar that we have to the Bible. 